Well, hey guys, for today's video, it is high time I bust some sweating myths. I'm gonna be covering the top six myths that I hear repeated over and over again about sweating. If you are new here, welcome. I'm a board certified dermatologist, so I have expertise in all things sweat. If you didn't know, dermatologists are tasked with diagnosing and treating conditions of the sweat glands. The number one myth that I hear repeated over and over again, makes my blood boil actually, is that sweating helps detoxify the body. Anytime I hear the word detox, I just roll my eyes. It's really popular in the wellness industry to claim that things detoxify the body. The organ systems responsible for detoxifying your body for handling toxins are your liver primarily, as well as your kidneys in terms of excreting toxins, not your skin or your sweat glands. <laughs> sure, trace amounts of certain drug metabolites can be found in sweat, but the primary way in which they are processed and exit the body is not through your sweat. The reason we sweat is to cool the body. It's for thermoregulation. Sensors in your skin perceive heat that leads to an increase in blood flow and sweat production. And as sweat evaporates, it functions to cool the body. When somebody ingests a toxic compound, say for example, they are poisoned by something, they accidentally ingest something, the treatment is never to make them sweat a lot. Various treatments may be pursued, things like dialysis for certain toxins, as well as medications to help bind it up in the digestive system so it's not absorbed. It's not practical, safe, or effective to remove toxins, if you will, by increasing sweat production. Because when you sweat a lot, you lose volume. So your total body volume goes down, and that actually can increase the amount of a given harmful substance in the body, theoretically, just based on changes in drug metabolite distribution throughout the body. So it might actually raise blood levels of a particular toxin and be hazardous. Around this rhetoric of detoxifying with sweat, drink a lot of water or drink a lot of lemon water and sweat a lot, you'll detoxify the body, everything will just flush out, all those toxins will flush out. Drinking a lot of water, it's beneficial for health, but truthfully, this can actually end up being harmful for you if you're not careful. Because there are electrolytes in your sweat, if you sweat a lot, you're gonna lose electrolytes. And if you replace that lost volume with exclusively water, you can end up with a severe electrolyte disturbance that can be life-threatening. Um, there have been deaths in various marathon runners because they're sweating a lot throughout the race and they're, if they just drink water, they can end up going into uh, shock as a result of electrolyte disturbance. Not only is it impractical, but it can actually be hazardous to view sweat in this way as a cleansing or detoxifying method. There are actually different types of genetic skin conditions called ectodermal dysplasias, and a subset of those types of ectodermal dysplasias, the patients are born with a uh, few or absent sweat glands. Those patients don't have problems metabolizing, say, alcohol or any other substance, drug, medication. They have no issue with that. Where they have problems is with getting overheated. They actually can die from hyperpyrexia, basically an elevated body temperature because they don't thermoregulate properly. So they have to be counseled on proper uh, cooling measures to keep the skin cool because they can't, they can't sweat properly to allow for evaporative water loss to cool the body. Sure, there are medications that are excreted through the sweat and can be detected in your sweat, but that is not their primary way of leaving the body. And simply increasing sweat output will not necessarily make those drugs or medications quote, go through your system any faster. Myth number two is that Getting a good sweat will give you glowing, radiant skin. I hear this a lot from like certain people in fitness that sweat is great for your skin because it gives you that healthy glow. Increased heart rate and exertion that comes about with exercise increases blood flow to the skin surface. It also is anti-inflammatory. And ultimately, yes, that, that can give you an improvement in skin tone, clarity, give you that glowy, radiant look but it's not the, the sweat output on the skin surface. And that's important because you can get exercise and improve 
the look of the skin through the same approaches of improving blood flow to the skin and improving immune function and all of those things. And you don't necessarily need to work up an intense sweat to do that. Sweat is actually irritating to the skin. Sweat left on the skin surface, it can break down the skin barrier and lead to a lot of irritation. It is a known trigger of an flare of eczema. For people who have atopic dermatitis, sweat left on the surface of the skin can really aggravate aggravate their skin. Sweat on the skin surface can disrupt the health of the skin barrier, make you more prone to irritation. For people with acne, that can aggravate an acne flare. Sweat also can be super irritating in the skin folds and lead to chafing. So it's not the sweat on the skin surface that's giving it a healthy radiant glow. It's really more about the improvement in circulation. Number three, getting a good sweat will help with weight loss. And again, I think this is a situation where people are equating the benefits of exercise with increased sweat output and that the increased sweat output is what gets you those benefits, but it's really the exercise. And exercise increases your heart rate and a compensatory mechanism to cool the body as the peripheral receptors detect heat from your environment and the skin warming with improved blood flow that's gonna to be to sweat. But simply sweating is not going to help with weight loss, with the exception of the fact that if you sweat a lot and then step on the scale, yes, your body weight will go down a bit, depending on how much you've sweat, because you have just lost water, but that's not fat loss. If you are exercising, increasing caloric expenditure, and that's accompanied by sweat, that can have benefits for fat loss. But simply sweating alone it's not going to do anything for fat loss. I see a lot of people who wear these sauna suits and they wear it like when they're on a weight loss journey in an effort to improve weight loss. And all you're really doing is increasing uh, water loss, volume depletion. So when you drink or eat again, that volume is going to come right back. So it's not in your best interest and it can be dangerous to sit in a sauna suit and just sweat and sweat and sweat because again, you're gonna end up losing electrolytes and this can end up sabotaging your fitness journey, your exercise goals. The other reason this is super misleading is that for people who maybe lead a very sedentary lifestyle and are trying to incorporate some exercise, some movement into their lifestyle, they may be misled into thinking that they've gotta get super sweaty in order for it to make a difference, and that's absolutely false. You don't need to get super sweaty in order to derive benefit from exercise. Exercise has many benefits beyond uh, helping with weight management. Uh, improvement in cardiovascular function, reduce your risk for heart disease. It's beneficial for your mood. It's also beneficial for immune function. I mean, it has tons of health benefits beyond weight management. But don't think that you have to be sweating profusely in order to do that, or that sweating profusely is necessarily going to help you achieve those goals any faster. You can sweat profusely here in Houston without moving at all. <laughs> It's very easy to do. Okay, number four is that sweating is uh, gonna help you with your mood, and that's not true either. Exercise can offer a mood boost because exercise releases endorphins that are beneficial for your mood, but you don't need to generate sweat to derive that benefit. For example, you can go on a nice walk outdoors on a cool, dry day and not really produce much sweat no need to cool the body, but you're still getting your heart rate up and you're still going to release those endorphins and have the, that beneficial outcome on your mood. There are a lot of situations where people end up sweating and their mood is not good. For example, there's something called emotional sweating. Um, I'm sure you've experienced it. When you get super anxious, you sweat a lot maybe on your face, your palms, the soles of your feet, under your arms. That has nothing to do with improving your mood. And I think, again, people are misconstruing the benefits of exercise with sweat output. And I wanna make it clear that you don't need to generate a lot of sweat in order to derive the benefits of exercise. The next one could not be further from the truth. I hear this a lot. Sweating will help unclog your pores. No, it won't. The eccrine sweat gland, which is what produces sweat that is that dilute electrolyte solution whose purpose it is to cool the body, that eccrine sweat gland is not associated with your pore. Your pore 
is your your hair is a hair follicle and the glands the the glands that are associated with that are going to be the sebaceous oil gland and a gland called the apocrine gland depending on the location uh, of the of the follicle but the eccrine sweat gland is not associated with with a follicle so how is it going to unclog anything it, it's not pore clogging has to do with the the follicle uh, the skin cells that line it they turn over and, and they get kind of stuck together. They get very sticky and make a little plug there. And then, you know, you've got oil from the sebaceous gland dumping in there into the, into the follicle. And that oiliness in people who have acne, that, that can lead to a breakout. The bacteria that live down there in the follicle break down that sebum. A lot of inflammation comes in. That's how you get pimples. Has nothing, the eccrine gland, however, is way outside of that. I mean, it's in the skin, it's, it's nearby, but it's outside of that. To illustrate this further, on the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet, you have eccrine sweat glands. That's why your palms and soles get super sweaty. You have no follicles there. You don't grow hair on your palms and soles. If anything, as I mentioned earlier, sweat on the skin surface, it's pretty irritating. So if you sweat a ton and you hang out in sweaty clothing, that sweat can be very irritating. Admixed with sebum on the skin surface can be super irritating, that mixture together. Plus, if you've got cosmetics on, they can mix with the oil, the sebum, and the sweat. It'd be super irritating. That actually can trigger an acne breakout. Sweat left on the skin surface will get broken down also by the bacteria. That leads to body odor. And because the sweat on the skin surface disrupts the skin barrier, it also can put you at risk for little skin infections like a uh, bacterial skin infection. The last one is, is something that we've already really talked about, but we're gonna go into more detail. And that is this idea that getting in a good workout is synonymous with a sweat sesh. And like the amount of sweat that you produce is somehow representative of how intense the workout was and kind of your overall uh, fitness success, you know, reaching your goal. And that's not entirely true. Again, the purpose of sweat is to cool the body. And if anything, having a ton of sweat dripping on the skin surface, it could be sabotaging your fitness goals because sweat pooled on the skin surface, like droplets of sweat, they're not going to efficiently evaporate. And they're actually going to slow further evaporation of more sweat as it's being produced as you're in a warm environment. And so it's going to make you feel warmer. So you're gonna feel hot, you're gonna feel overheated. That can be limiting for you in terms of how much you can exert yourself. Have you ever tried working out in a closed space with poor circulation? You start to sweat a lot more and it makes it very uncomfortable. Whereas if you have the fan going and you allow for good evaporation of sweat, you don't get soaked in sweat. Sweat is able to cool the body as it evaporates. You can tolerate your workout and you can push harder and you can get a better workout. Furthermore, excessive sweat on the skin surface in say runners can contribute to chafing, which can be uncomfortable and really stand in the way of your, of your goals. It also, on the, also excessive sweat on the soles of the feet combined with footwear that maybe is not supportive, maybe you're wearing the wrong socks, that can lead to blisters. That's not a good situation if you are a runner. And if you are into lifting weights, of course, most people, I believe, wear gloves when they lift weights to help. But as you can imagine, a lot of sweat on the palms and the hands can make it difficult to properly grip. And that friction on the hands can lead to blisters. A better approach is to make sure that you work out in an environment or outdoors where you have good circulation of air and you wear clothing that's moisture wicking so it helps pull the moisture off of the skin surface. Again, the goal with the sweat is to evaporate, to cool your body. The other thing to realize is that if you're new to working out and you've never done it before, in the beginning, you actually sweat less efficiently. You'll make a lot more sweat, but as you condition your body, 
you start to become more efficient at sweating and you don't make as much sweat. You don't typically produce the same volume of sweat. Of course, it will vary depending on what environment you're working out in and the temperature and all those things. But with conditioning, you actually, your body adapts and you don't put out as much volume of sweat. Along those lines, don't work out in a sauna suit. I, I see people do this all the time with the idea that like somehow they're getting a more intense workout. Sure, when you are starting your warm up and things, Wearing clothing can help with keeping the muscles warm in the beginning as you're waiting for the blood flow to get circulating and things to warm up, but then take that stuff off as you start to warm up because it's gonna get in the way of evaporation of sweat. The sweat's gonna get trapped to the body. Depending on the fabric, it's gonna soak it off. That's gonna lead to skin irritation through frictional forces. That chafing can be painful, uncomfortable, it can trigger an eczema flare, it can aggravate your acne on your feet, it can cause blisters, and it's going to make you feel uncomfortable and it's going to limit your tolerance for the exercise that you're doing. Whereas if you have good circulation of air, you're wearing lightweight, breathable clothing, you're gonna be able to you're gonna be able to train harder um, or train at, a, at your best pace, I should say. All right, guys, so those are the common myths that I hear always repeated over and over again about sweating, but just remember, it's there to help you stay cool, and it does that by evaporating. So let it evaporate to cool your body when you are um, getting warm when you are working out to help you tolerate your exercise and uh, make sure you do stay hydrated but if you are sweating profusely don't just replenish with water alone make sure you're also replenishing electrolytes accordingly um, so that you don't put yourself at risk for electrolyte abnormalities especially if you're doing something really intense and um, of long duration like a marathon or like a long bike ride you, you want to make sure you are replenishing the sweat, the volume that you lose with, with electrolytes. And don't be hanging out in a sauna suit in an effort to lose weight. All, all you're gonna do is lose water weight and that can potentially be dangerous for you. I hope this video was informative to you guys. I do have some videos about treatments for excessive sweating. I know a lot of you guys deal with that. Um, I have an older video on treatments for hyperhidrosis, so I'll link that down below in the description box if you wanna check that out. We talk all about um, iontophoresis and uh, neurotoxin, uh, cubrexa, all of those things. So check that one out if that's of interest to you. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.